the link and then you can watch this again. So welcome back. This is me reading, not really so much reviewing as commentating on scripts that people have sent me and given me their permission to show on YouTube. This one is called Dead Cell by J.E. Clark. And unlike the previous four I've read, this one I actually did read a little bit of. Uh, I can't remember how many pages, but um, so hopefully I'll be able to go through this a little faster. I know it's a well-written script, which is always good. And so if you want to hear any of the disclaimers of who I am and if my opinion matters, feel free to watch the first part of any of the previous ones, but I'm just going to get right into it. Again, I don't think that anyone is watching live, but that doesn't matter. Here we go. Fade in. I'm not sure why some people put uh, bolds on their scene headers. I, it doesn't matter, but I don't think it's necessary. A pain rattles him up. I think I would... If I capitalize anything here, maybe it would be every, all three words. Because hand is really more important than latex covered. I mean, they're all important. I get it, but. Dark figure. Okay, this is the key. I don't know if this means the sound of boots or like a close-up of boots, but I'm not really big on over capitalizing things, so. I would keep it to uh, characters and sound effects and maybe super, super crucial other things. Watches the needle into the core, drains a switch dry. So he knows, he must know who lives here, this guy, because he knows what he's doing. Puts it in the wine, so the wine must be open. I'm not a wine guy, so I don't know if it always has a cork in it as opposed to a screw on top or what. Hmm. Takes a bite of an apple. All right, so he take he runs but he doesn't take a knife. Interesting. Montecor Hospital Emergency Room Exit. Woo, entrance. That's a mouthful. All right, so here we go. Dr. Grace Thompson. I believe she is our lead. She's petite, efficient, Latina. Tooth. I, I think Bluetooth is capitalized with no hyphen. Okay, so we know her daughter's Leia. Maybe this is Leia. It could be. All right, now we know it's her daughter. P-O-D. I should probably know what that is, but I don't. So Leia, okay, she's, t this is day, so she's talking, okay, Leia maybe is at school, is in, in, in trouble or something. I'm going to try to put on the auto scroll and see if I can keep up. All right, so we're meeting another people, Herbert Robinson, Adam Dumphy. Tells me I'm from Spectrum Hill, the person on the doctor tells him all of your time. I can't pick her up, I'm at work, no, I can't make her the father. All right, so we're learning a lot. Fine, 30 minutes, she can wait, right? Three things up, size, everything okay, sure, my daughter had an unexpected event at school. Yeah, maybe, unless sure is sarcastic, or I don't think it is. Um, maybe don't even say sure, just my daughter. Stares at the package blankly. So he, she has an envelope, but then it says package. So I'm sure those are one and the same, but maybe just say she stares at it blankly.
Okay. Setting it up nicely. Found some more. So here's another guy. So we've got four characters plus the bad guy and Leah, who we haven't seen. The two lock eyes, great stiff. About the seedings and readers I sent you and your husband. X. Ooh, X is the husband. Okay. Not far apart for all our sakes. All right. That tells us everything we need to know about their relationship. Don't get along. Their X. And then dump coughs. Impatient. Raise it. Thank you. Uh, all right. Hopefully, we know. This is the hospital. It sounds like a person's name. And maybe we saw it back here. Maybe, I don't know. Well, we wouldn't have seen a name there probably. So that might be a little confusing, but maybe that doesn't matter. And this is, I mean, this is a way to give exposition without giving exposition. I think you know him. Obviously, she does. So maybe there's a little more clever way to introduce him. The hearing's next week. I need a written disposition. I want you to voicemail so you don't call back. So most likely, Grace already knows all of this. She knows he's, yeah, she, she probably knows all this. So maybe, uh, maybe there's a quicker way to, s to say that. But I mean, it's not bad. Quick last month, I've been filling in some more exposition. I like this, more like auditioning. That's good. On the train. So Adam's going with her on the train. English knocking. Grace swings toward the noise. So a patient is doing this. Color coordinate post is closer. The nurse also with a small patient. Grace on towards some stairs. Don't you agree? So she's, I assume she's out of frame here, or maybe not. Maybe they're all still in the frame. Don't you agree? I don't know what would prompt the Dr. Robinson to say that, other than the fact that Grace went to help that little girl. So we've got a small patient, and then we've got a little girl, which I assume is the same person. Um, should just be consistent. We've got another doctor, so we're building up the characters here. Maybe they won't all play a part in it, but I guess we'll see. Grabs a nurse. Man, we got all kinds of people here. So is this... Okay, moments later, so it's all in the same place. The girl. She's down syndrome. So it's treachers, treachers, treachers syndrome. We can throw muscles. Ooh, nice. All right, so Grace is the boss. Knows what she's doing. Forgot the paperwork. So Adam, I mean, have Adam and the others just been standing there watching the whole time? It feels like this should have been maybe in a slightly different scene. I don't know, that whole part. Honey. So they, the school must have called him also. Okay, an accident. Accident. We can't control her, Grace. All right, I guess that's good. He bars. He's watching her while we're at the conference. Sunny, who else? So Eric is going to the conference. Sunny, your dippy friend. Hmm, that's. I don't know. 
again, I don't know. It's not bad. Uh, dumping her off on others. You still hear that crazy die too. So Eric's doing all this complaining, and yet, I mean, why doesn't he have partial custody? Maybe that's part of the problem. That crazy diet. So there's some more ex exposition. Um, maybe a more subtle way to introduce that, if it matters. I think I see you on the train. Nurses will all treat. Craig approaches fury in his eyes. That woman's an accident waiting to happen. You see that I gave her sick girl's life. Looks like she saved it to me. Oh, that's nice. A lot of people in this scene um, just standing around. I don't know what Dr. Robinson would have been doing that whole time. But I like I like that. All right. Blue parking lot. All right, getting ready to go in. Grace along, dressed in place, running against the flowers. They break the door. Cats go to work. Seven. All right, lay it seven. Screws on the cover. Pull back pigtail braids. Miss Webb, an aging hippie. Like her having was a nightmare. So was the food fight. Oh, that's a good segue. That is a nice segue into that. Was just the first salvo. Miss Sweeney's janitorial team is still scraping goulash off the walls. Shrinks in her seat. So Leah is sort of a liar, which is not unusual for a seven-year-old. All right, he tidies up. Same as was. Same up, so, all right, so this is obviously where the bad guy broke in because it's the same one as before. She's a seven-year-old and she's got textbooks piled at her side. That might be a little unusual. Half eaten might be a hyphen there, but it doesn't matter. It's in the trash. So she assumes the doctored line in plain sight. I guess that's in case the reader isn't reading very carefully. Um, I'm tired of veggies. That's what got me in trouble today. Veggies got you in trouble. <clears throat> Vegetin. We finish our work. No, it's hard. Look, math is fun. Two plus four. So she's in third grade, second or third grade, maybe a little behind in her math. Why do I have to study? Seeing do all sorts. Whatever you choose to do, one thing or another. Getting what you want. That's hard. You have to be tough, flexible, smart, but ignore the boys. They'll go away. You mean like that? Oh, burned out of the out of the mouths of babes. That's a nice. Grabs the bottle of wine, sets it down, and pours a stiff cranberry juice for now. So the wine's open, it's been poured, it's sitting there. Oh, now she's drinking it. So wait a minute. <clears throat> she grabs a bottle of wine, sets it on the counter, but she's just drinking cranberry juice, I guess, for now. Do people really put TVs above their fireplaces? I guess they do. Xbox controller. Ooh. So she's doubling down on her insistence that all she did was throw broccoli. Yikes. All right. I would, small matter, but I'm always big on putting the actual character names in a scene. If only once it gets into production, we have to know who this is. I mean, it's obvious, but you could just say, I mean, I don't know what the matters is continuous or not, but, but make it apparent that it's still Grace. Later that night, how do we, how will we know this? I would just say night. 
sleeps in bed. I guess she could be sleeping somewhere else. It's difficult to spot her face. Would she really keep forgetting? I think you could just maybe delete that line. Shh, I know, honey. It's tough being a mom, too. Maybe you can help me out. Behave for Aunt Sony this sunny this weekend and no more broccoli throwing sports. How about Brussels parts? They're soft. <laughs> That's good. So she traces a number eight, but yet it's infinity. I, I would just say traces the infinity sign. Uh, that's not really math, but I get the uh, the point later. I mean, as opposed to sooner. Sorry, that was snide. I would just say night. I mean, it's obviously not sooner. Ooh, husband removed. Ceramic night, apple at its side. We assume it's a different. Oh, then glass of wine. Arrange next to that glass of wine. All right, so. We have a pony, we have classical music. She sips the wine. Same time, how do we know this? I, I would just say night because it'll be apparent. Click, someone coming in. I mean, again, this doesn't, this helps the read, I guess. It doesn't help in production because I know this is a reading script, but um, maybe you don't even, just stairwell maybe would work. Familiar boots. Familiar boots. Who have we seen that is familiar? Is it his? Is it the ex? Hmm. Tries to scream, removes her earbuds, listens to just silence, struggles. A gloved hand mashes a cloth against her face. The eyes flutter. All right. So we're on kind of the inciting incident, the catalyst. Um, page 10. I guess, well, we know she's going to the thing. We know the aunt's babysitting. And so she gets snatched here. Um, so I guess it's the catalyst. She's being acted upon. Ooh, reinserts the earbud. So their rooms must be relatively far away because even though there was no sounds, there's got to be a little bit of sound. Okay. Uh-oh. There she goes. Crash to the floor. The liquid doesn't really crash, but uh, it spills. But that's all right. The room swims. So this is sort of a POV, a figure in the doorway. Maybe capitalize F in figure. Something of another attempt to stay awake at sex or dull like a vortex. Uh, I don't think this is literal. It's more of a novelish writing but i get it i don't know how we know that unless this is slow motion i guess time moves at glacial speed except for the figure so this sort of thing definitely allowable in screenplays where you write incomplete sentences um, for those of you who don't know any better uh, so that's what i would say about that So she's fumbling, so if she's returning to speed, helpless fingers, he picks up the blade. Uh-oh. He picks up the blade, fades in the darkness as it glints. The blade glints, okay. Somewhere in the mountains, afternoon. I'm pretty much a day or night guy, unless it's like daybreak or sunset or something. Rattle and roar. Rattle and roar. Continuous. I don't know. I've read a lot of scripts lately with continuous. Some of them have misused that. This one, J.E. seems to have it right, but I don't know that it's super important to include. Maybe it is. So she's on the floor. Sits up. There's no dress in the same clothes as before. 
Take your feet, touch your hand, the wind, bloody. Oh, bloody fingers. What the stems are going to trip over a mango? A body lies on its stomach. A pool of blood lessons. She rubs on the body. Skin. Oh, Grace Gas is ceramic. The ceramic knife. Slash to pieces. So there's a dead guy in there. The ceramic knife. I, I probably, uh, that must have been the one that they, she, the guy got from her uh, kitchen. How the hell did she get here? Ring a cell phone by puts on a fork and jewel bus. Let's run out. Ring, ring, a false silent place. Grabs it and flips it open. The wallpaper inside is Leia. So it's a flip phone. So this is a dated script, or maybe it's an old thing, or it just needs to be updated. So the wallpaper uh, it's a picture of Leia. Tear streak the girl's red in face. So, oh, it's a photo of her, but it's a present. Okay, something he just took. It hits Rito. The machine picks over. This is Grace. Grace and Leah. So she hits Redial. Who is she calling? So she's calling her own phone, I guess. The message will call. I'm going to show dead silence. Are you there? Pick up now. Since I'm going to start. I would say filtered right here. Male voice filtered. It's good of you to call. So there's only color I know. Who's this one? Keep down. Where's my number? Ooh, that's pretty good. Whimpers in the background. Whimpers, it may be through the phone, so we know it's in the background of the call, which again is filtered. Lay, is that you, mommy? Sarah? Yikes. Hold on. Thing you want. What do you want? I can pay. I don't want your money. Go to the bedside table. Open the drawer. More screening. Mommy, don't. And do as you were told. Resources as you turned down. Revolver license. I next one says that you're going to kill someone. Oh! I have your daughter's now telling what could happen. Pick up the wallet. Look inside. Very self with no money, no ID. Just a photo of a fat balding man. She flips a picture of Derek Reiner. Renner. Runner. Just scrawled on the other side. That's your target. He's on the train. You want me to shoot him? You don't want me to shoot him. You want me to kill him. Uh, I don't know if that matters. That would make it more immediate. I've never even held a gun. <laughs> well, if there's a gun there, I don't know that she would necessarily... S Do you want me to kill him? Um, maybe it just ends there. You want me to kill him? It's not rocket science. Find the man, point, and shoot. I, yeah, I, I mean, I guess that could, that could come or go. I'll call the cops. Turn over the phone. Uh oh, this is not gonna be good. A charging dock is sealed. You, you don't even know where we are. I've taken the liberty of sealing the charging dock. Every call you make will eat up battery. Consider that your deadline. Oh, that's. Clever in a good way. The battery dies. Leah does too. Oh, man. So the charging dock is sealed, but then he tells her that. Unless, But I guess it might not be apparent. I'm not a killer. Uh, that's you. I like that. Pick up the gun. Picks up the gun with two fingers like a snake, which can wake up and bite. All right. And I guess, I mean, that's a... A nice way of saying that, but a little novel-ish. Mama, up oh, voiceover. So this this should be filtered, not voiceover, because it may, makes it seem like this guy is I don't know, just not consistent. Screams on the wind. Oh, Grace, asking questions isn't wise. Maybe God do what he says. Let me talk to my daughter. I don't know that she would realistically say that. Just do what he says. That's enough. No texting, no talking. They use up your battery. You're not even one figure. You're going to be contact with some other way. They'll be picking up your daughter off a trip. Oh, man. Nasty. Click. It pretty much implies the phone cuts off. This pretty much implies. 
That's all right, though. She dials 911. It disconnects, tries again, snaps a nail. Right, maybe this will be important for later on. A flat dial tone hums in her ear. Knock on the door. Grace cringes. She crawls her hands in his hand. Smear, yike! And this is like it's locked. Two coupons slid under. <laughs> All right, this is good. I like this. Sufficiently creepy. Don't know again about uh, bolding those. Um, moments later, as opposed to just later. Paces room, keeping it safe. She's on the corp. I don't know how big a. She's in a compartment. It's going to be hard to keep a safe distance from the court. Corpse, unless she has an executive rail car. She squints at the dead man's so she's the only face no one to tell who he was. Squints? She's keeping a safe distance, and yet she's squinting at him. It seems like maybe she would kneel next to him or squat down and look at him. Can't bring herself to touch the blade. She reaches for the knife. So is she considering grabbing it by its... Whatever hilt or something handle, footsteps echo laughter in the hallway. Grace panics, drags the body toward the bed. How how big is this rail car compartment? Um, it jams halfway, pushes hard, eventually makes wet crunching sounds. Yuck. Keys tumble from its pockets. Oh, the body's pockets jingle as they hit the floor. So they they jingle. And yet she doesn't hear them or she doesn't see them. Water pitcher. Don't need a comma there. Dipping the napkin in with trembling hand. She scrubs her. This sentence, I mean, this sentence is fine. It's sort of written backwards. She grabs a napkin, dips it in the glass, and scrubs her bloody hands. Mm -hmm. And searches her a torn ticket and key card. She's, so. The torn ticket isn't capitalized, but the key card is. So again, I would probably do neither. She stares at the picture of her target. Uh, which is where? It's kind of what? So she finds these, but then she looks at the picture. Why you? Why me? It's fine. Cleaning maid approaches the frosted window. He card signs a lot. Grace says, oh, I don't want it. It's too messy in here, ma'am. That's what I'm here for. The woman, so the maid, right? The maid, the maid, she or she takes a step inside. It's embarrassing. I'd rather clean up myself. The maid puts her hands in her breast. Okay, I'll show her the wrong picture. Get up, take the shower, get the paint back up. Things that do not disturb. That's. So she waits. Oh, okay. So this is the maid. All right, the maid leaves, and then Grace steps outside and hangs a thing. All right, and then we're in the hallway. Inches along in heels. She spots a bloodstain on her shirt, pulls her blazer over the spot, and the old couple. Conductor, old style. This is ooh. Uh oh, lawyer Adam. Okay, there's the lawyer. Hands her face to the conductor. I like to register complaint. The maid left her argument very unsanitary. Yes, sir. So right here, we know they're confined spaces. So that I guess that logistics of dragging the body across the floor that we read earlier might need a little bit of touch up. Touch my private things. Ha. <laughs> All right, we know Adam is a control freak with whatever OCD or whatever that thing is. My company paid my company paid for first class. My company paid first class, maybe for first class. Trots down the hall. Maybe he's actually running, trotting. Seems a little bit strange. Tips his hat her way. Ma'am shrinks against the wall. Can does the Get on this train. I assure you, we take runs. Uh, what you overheard is a rare. <laughs> good misunderstanding. That's always good. Someone has my cell phone. The cell phone blares like a trumpet. Uh, I guess. 
Oh, this is a very interesting. The male voice, which should be filtered again, basically is tracking her somehow on the train. We don't know how. How do you know I know everything ever about you take? Oh, I'll be watching you. Very nice. I don't know that she needs to add that. Or he does. I guess it depends how well people remember this. Um, again, off screen now, before it was voiceover. And this is this is filtered, this is filtered, etc. Please do what he says. I'm scared. Are you okay? Your daughter's fine, but your minutes are wasting miles. She would have to talk awful quiet, not for the conductor to hear what's going on. Even though I guess, well, yeah, you know, she does talk a few times. Maybe she ducks and turns away or something. Although I, I see that she whispers into the phone. Oh, hi, Jerry. You had a concern. It's nothing. May I seem to have misplaced my cocktail tickets? Light up. This is a problem you can deal with. I don't know that there's a need for a exclamation point there. Have two on the house. Well, she said she said two, and he's giving her two. So I would just let him give them, let him give them to her and not say anything. Bailey's bar car continuous. All right, I guess it's important that this happens in real time. Multiple shell stock and liquor, first class, no expense, man. Wheelchair. A wheelchair and broom. So again, these are props, which is fine, but maybe if it was a shooting script or a, you know, a per script for a line producer, a prop guy, but I wouldn't do it otherwise. For a train, this place is popular. I don't. I don't, I would just say all the tables are full. It's just an editorial comment that doesn't really show up visually. I mean, there's another way to say that. Screens are over these. LSD tripper. So LSD, okay, old copper laughs. I don't know that you would need to capitalize laugh. Passengers chat. One by one. Probably no comma needed there. Lingers longer over men. A hippie with beady eyes sits alone. Everyone else is dressed for success. This one doesn't belong. Grace P. Hit the cell phone. The battery seems to be low. A hipster takes a para, paranormic shot of the bar with his cell. Pan oh, panoramic. <laughs> Other patrons. Bring on phone number. Target. Studies are in his face, intent to memorize every line. I don't know about that. Darwin looks too old to be your boyfriend. Or the kind of Darwin, if I should turn this on perfectly, you can uh, rub one hand. Show me yours, I'll show you mine. He's not my boyfriend. Hides a picture of a blonde woman smiling. I don't know why I haven't deleted this. It's been gone for two years. I'm sorry. She's not dead. We broke up. It wasn't like. Uh. He's the bartender, and he's telling her all this. Is he a bartender? No. Over the counter. Yeah, bartending rag. So he's the bartender. That seems that would be against uh, train policy to fraternize with the passengers, I would assume. I don't know why, unless there's a reason that he had to spill all that exposition. I don't know why he would say that. To burn? To burn. Oh, very clever. I've had enough for a while. That's nice. That's my livelihood, maybe. That's my line. I'm in the line of bartending, but truth... Uh, Maybe something a little different there. The hippie, sorry, lady, what are you gonna do? So the the 
the hipster could be the bad guy. Cranberry juice. But what I do's got value, no matter what they bitch about. Oh, oh, oh. But but what I do's got value. Okay, porn drinks. Ready customers. Mm. Do you have a pen? Ah, the old phone number. Gambit. He sends out tools. Excuse me a moment. He links your guys. Smile. Joking. A real charmer. Help. Man, there's a lot of people on this train. It's Derek Renner, the target. Again, I don't think we, unless the reader isn't paying attention, I, I mean, it doesn't hurt, I guess. Their eyes connect. Confusion blooms on his face. I don't know what that look is. It went past. Uh oh, I got a little girl. That's not good. Help to finish. Help? What? Oh, oh. Not just the napkin with the word help toward him. Okay. Dr. Thompson, we've been looking for you. Dr. Thompson, where have you been hiding? Grace jumps and tucks a napkin. Dr. Thompson, sit down, trapped. I don't think, I think you could do away without the quotation marks. Stop by your room to give you the court papers. He couldn't find you and the door was locked. Uh, all right. Uh, maybe, I don't know if this line is needed. So we've got Dr. Robinson and we've got Craig. Sags relieved. Darwin smiles at both men, the more stiffly at Craig than Robinson. Not sure why. Friends of yours, colleagues. The napkin peeks out underneath. Let me refresh your drink. What's that? Sex on the beach? Why don't you wash yourself, sir? I don't drink on business trips. Uh, okay. I guess that's fine. Good for you and more for me. Nice line. Bryce is also just helplessly running her sleeve in besides Craig. Bouncy Jamie on his heel. Barkeep right line for me and a showy temple for Jamie. Maybe for my daughter? For Jamie here? Grace chokes. Who wiggles his fingers at Jamie? Chokes, literally, like she's choking on what she's drinking or eating. I'm not sure the point of that. Darren wiggles his fingers at Jane. Please peekaboo. The bashful girl hides her face in on her side. I always get her Shirley Temples on business trips. It's her special treat. I'm uh, not sure why that line is needed. Other than to say that he goes on business trips. Uh, I would just assume that Darwin would leave and go get the drinks. You folks traveling to the metal conference too. Exposition, that's fine. Montecore Hospital Trauma Department. I work with them. Solid crew. Well, if... if He's from Montecore. I work with you guys. I work with them. I mean, he is part of them. Solid crew. Yeah, hold up. Stends his arm past Grace's face of panic. Leans away. What would cause her panic? My open alpha ends up where it shouldn't be. Do I know you? You look familiar. No, I'm sure. Why not? Writes this down in her lap. Cell phone lights up. She she blinks. Oh. Once again, squints at Grace confused. Why would he squint at her? She clamps the phone to her ear. It's a perfect opportunity to shoot him for your daughter. Oh, man. This is, once again, filtered. 
up. <laughs> she yells this out loud, which is probably not something she would do. Uh, yeah, this is tricky. She would either have to whisper this, again, turn away, leave the table, but then that would create suspicion. So I like that she's in a pickle. Dr. Thompson just point. Oh, another nice line right here. Right here. Where are you? Jumps his feet and stares around. Wouldn't really stare around the room. Look around the room. People chat around phones, texting, talking to hipster shoots at selfies. I'll put the goatee and tuck left. This is just odd that, oh, all right, no, maybe not. I mean, the people she's with have got to wonder what the heck is going on, unless she's a lot farther away than it appears there. Click. All right, hangs up again. All the men stare at her. She picks up her drink with shaking hands. Why would she jump? Uh, is it in reaction to his line or is she her just ongoing nerves? Uh, what's going into you? Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. This is a hundred percent needed. This line here, we all know it's sort of an unusual deal. Holy cow! Uh, oh, I still got, I'm gonna go for an hour. Just because that's probably enough. And then I'll read the rest of it and make some more comments inside the script. All right, let's see. What's going on here? Juice rolls across his own help napkin. Oh, that's a bummer. Sweep the saw, you know, in the trash. His eyes, his eyes critique. Grace is now ruined. Look, Panberry, that's the worst package. Before that, oh, before that said, steaming will help. Three bars left. This phone <laughs> does not last very long. I guess maybe if this was going to be set in modern times, uh, it could be apparent that, you know, it could actually, ooh, a ticking clock, it could have a percentage on the phone. That would be even better than bars because it's, it's like Jumanji when they had the whatever. But that would be interesting if it was like at 25% and then it would literally go down and she would know uh, when it's going to run out. Says shirt. I have to go and see you guys. She dashes toward the exit. Janie, why would someone think the other one? So you work with her. She's kind of cute. Uh, yeah, I. I don't really love this right here, unless there's some reason. Uh, for it, that's going to come back later. I'm not sure. Continuous, races through corridors, I guess the hallway, long bounding steps. She passes, see her car zips through an exit, resolver bangs against her hip. So she's carrying it, okay. Bailey's bar car, continuous. Again, I guess I just wouldn't use all these continuouses, but Grace seems flighty these days, probably due to the divorce. Yes, a sad thing to happen to such a fine, upstanding girl, girl, woman, or doctor. Oops, there's a lot on her plate, maybe too much responsibility to handle. Uh, hmm. Not in love with this. Um, maybe the scene starts right here. Dr. Thompson's got a lot on her plate. I don't know what this first part really adds to it. What are you saying? It's just something to fact when you fall like a more like me. Oh, he is a sneaky old bastard. Focus on your damn saucer. Sudden movement. The hippie slides under Grace's abandoned seat. What is it, Kaka? You two look at anyone buy one off me? Uh, oh, oh, oh. 
buy one of the tickets off of him. All right. I assume this must have some relevance. Moments later, again, I would just get rid of that. The audience won't know. Grace Ross is past the conductor. Her, her room swings into view. Obviously not literally. A cleaning cart. I, I wouldn't capitalize this. I don't think it needs an exclamation point. Again, think of visually. How, how do you show a cleaning cart justifying caps and an exclamation point? I get what you're trying to do, and it does work for the read. It just... Uh, I won't... Uh, sorry. <laughs> that was an incomplete thought. Let's find there's Serene, the conductor, approaches from behind. Dr. Thompson darts into the room, slams the door, snaps the lock into place, and clicks. So the maid was in her room. The maid doesn't see anything going on. He rolls his eyes, jiggles the handle. We probably, I mean, we, we probably know this is continuous. No blood anywhere. We don't know that the conductor's knocking because we can't see him, but that's all right. A knock on the door. We were told to pick up a shirt. We were informed it's unclean. The conductor goes, <laughs> I would assume someone else would do that, not the conductor. Oh, there you are again. I'm, I'm not in the, I'm not in the shape for company. Um, he's not asking for company. She's asking to get her shirt. Ah, oh, there you are again. I don't know what she would say, but this doesn't feel right. If you could hand your peril through the door, <laughs> through the door opening, maybe. Um, it's our job. Let us help. Uh, so it feels like what would happen here. We're informed it's unclean, so that's fine. She doesn't want to let him in, even though she doesn't know what's going on and why the place is clean. Um, but I would just cut this dialogue, maybe. Or cut all of that. Um, and this, too. This whole thing. Okay, let me get out of it first. I don't know that there needs to be a comma there. So I'm not sure what this adds right here. She shuts the door, goes, oh, no, the handprints disappeared. The handprints. The handprint has disappeared. Okay. What about the body? This is kind of, again, this is sort of like a, a novel. How do you show that on the screen? I don't know. Pokes under the bed with her foot, with her hand. Dust bunny tumbles out. The corpse is gone. Yikes. Conductors. Concurrent viewers, too. I wonder if that's accurate. Someone actually watching? This is exciting. This is a good script. Arch against the window pane. The small glass. That's a pretty big window pane. Peels off her shirt, opens the door, cracks, stuffs the garment through. Cell phone still in her hand. The phone rings, starting to drop on the floor. Oh! She's got... That's a big mistake of hers. But it works for the movie. Scoops it up. Hands it to her through the door, through the opening in the door. You should attend to that. This, I guess it's good, but this conductor is driving me crazy. Maybe he's a bad guy. Maybe he's the bad guy. Maybe he is. I mean, it would make sense why he's acting so weird. Primly folds. Oh, no, maybe he's not given this. Seems like this should be capitalized. Buck up, Preston, five years to retirement. Uh, people talking to themselves is always a toughie. I don't know that that is needed or not. About 10 more minutes, and we'll have an hour under our belt. This is definitely the... I would say the best script I've read of the five I've read so far. He shuffles away along suffering express. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's really needed. 
Of course, I'm a super boss. Ignore that comment. I don't even know why I said it. Anonymous sleeper car. Uh, oh, that's not good. She's right on the train. A duct taped wash cloth. I don't. This. A washcloth duct taped over her eyes, maybe, or something like that. This just f kind of feels backwards. A dark figure paces, holding Grace's knife and a toy train. Um, I would, it's probably not a whole toy train. It might be like a toy train car. A Bluetooth, all right, see, that is the correct spelling. I mean, anonymous, that just kind of made me chuckle when I read that. Unknown or just sleeper car, moments later. Again, how do we know? What the bleep happened? You want to intercut. I would just say intercut. We don't need this. Golden, not from where I was sitting, among witnesses. Uh, you let a golden opportunity slip by, slip right by. Um, I don't know. This doesn't sound like something someone would say among witnesses. All you had to do was go to a different car. Are you committed to our deal or not? Uh, maybe she could just say, I couldn't do it. Excuse me. Or maybe she doesn't say anything. Um, I don't know that he needs to give her direction because the important thing is, are you committed to our deal or not? Someone should be committed. Ooh, does he hear that? That's a good line. His icy silence. I'll do it okay, but it's not easy. You have to give me time. Um, this I would remove. It's a given. Maybe just you have to give me more time. Give me, or just give me more time. Whimpers. I mean, tosses them. Oh, warning. Bit rate. I get warnings on my YouTube thing saying my bit rate is too low. Good thing I have no video and I'm only streaming at 10 frames a second. Leave me alone. Uh, okay, checking all my chat. There's a lot of discussion not going on. Sorry. All right, here we go. Um, you have to give me time. You have to give me time. So what I'm looking for here, this script is... I'm not going to scroll to the end. Oh, it's 104, so 103 pages. So the end of Act 1 is somewhere, I mean, if you're a big structure person, somewhere in here. But I'm not really feeling, I mean, I like the script. Uh, I like the story. I'm not really feeling like a, as they say, a break into two. Um, he, She had the kind of chance to shoot him. She didn't. Um, but typically, the break into two is more of a proactive thing. She got acted upon uh, at the catalyst or inciting incident, but she's obviously very much a victim. She's not, maybe it's too early to take things into her own hands, but it feels like, I don't know how you could be proactive in, well, she tried to write that note, but maybe a little more proactive because uh, I don't really feel like we're going into the act two where we're going to see the traditional like B story and fun and games again looking at Mr. Blake Snyder's save the cat and save the cat returns or strikes back but I'm, I still like it I definitely like it there you are again okay I read this part Small, okay. All right, here's where I left off. I'll do it, it's not easy. Yeah, this, um, shut up, play with this. So that's weird. I think that was probably just left over from an early draft. And this is all on the phone again, so filtered into the phone. Play with this and answers. Where's the body? What? Uh... Oh, 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 you have to give me time and answers. Where's the body? 
Um, well, she's talking into the phone here, I assume, and she's talking to the phone here. So just a little inconsistency. I would just say cut this and just go right to where's the body. Don't worry about a dead man. You're concerned to be Leia first. Uh, maybe don't worry about a dead man. Worry about your live daughter for now or something. This is feels a little odd, especially with that comma there. Pricks her finger on the train. Inspiration lights her face. She lays her wrists across the toy and rubs rope against metal. Uh, what kind of train? Uh, toy train. I mean, I see the plot device here, but I'm a little puzzled as to why. There, well, there could be metal. Quiet as a church mouse. She lays her wrists on the toy and rubs. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I think of a plastic or a wooden train, so. I mean, out of the blue, she pricks her finger. Wait a minute. I just realized something. Oh, it is in her cut. So. What are we seeing here? We're seeing the okay. We're seeing the figure, but we're not seeing his face. Okay, um, just a little confused there. So maybe there's something else besides this toy train. <clears throat> I don't know what would have metal in it, but it doesn't. I don't know. The back is turned. He doesn't see. That man has a daughter, too. So, yeah, again, just I assume she's speaking into the phone the whole time. So even though you've intercut, it's it's just a little confusing to me who we're seeing when you typically assume whenever the person's talking, you see them. But that's not necessarily true. All right, the question is, who's he to you? I'm a doctor. I said, when doctors deal with death every day, you should be used to it by now. Okay, I like that. The rope unravels. So that kind of comes out of the blue. You got to, the reader's got to stop and think, is this being used metaphorically? Which obviously it isn't. Uh, the rope around Leah's wrist unravels or breaks, splits something. Rips. Oh, wait a minute. It's duct taped. And it's a cloth. Studies a man's back warily. All right, I'm I'm not entirely clear on that, but I'm going to continue on. She was got a rope because her wrists are tied, but she's got a duct tape on her mouth. So she pries a screw loose. So that's a toy train with a screw in it. You would probably unscrew it. You probably wouldn't pry a screw loose. I wouldn't do the caps there. But, I mean, I generally get it. I think this could be cleaned up a little with a different toy, maybe. Uh, cold to Grace. Have you checked your battery? Grace looks down. Two and a half bars remain. Again, percentage would be cool. Slice, slice. Slice, slice. When's the last time you saw your knife? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I it's a sort of clever, but I don't understand why he brings this up at this point. Lunges at her, holding the screw like a shiv. He catches her easily. The girl screams. So I... Again, this could be Leia screams. She's holding the screw, which is probably, you know, a half an inch long. But she's only a kid, so she doesn't know better. The man hangs up. Click. Maybe, I don't know. I guess you don't want to give him a name, but the dark figure, the man, the bad guy, the something um, to give him a little something more than man. Redials. A busy signal buzzes in her ear. All right, I'm going to stop 33 pages in. It's definitely got some juicy stuff going on here as I 
said in my comments, um, I, I like the dialogue for the most part. There's a few things I think could be trimmed. Some of the description may be cleaned up a little to make it super obvious so the reader can just go bang, bang, bang and make it even more of a page turner than it is already. Um, what else? It, I guess, I mean, structure doesn't really feel like it's hitting me over a head, but that's okay, I think. We'll see how it goes, and I will, I may not read this right now, but I'll definitely keep reading this. Um, I guess, you know, Grace is a pretty sympathetic character. The other guys are jerks. The bartender, we're not sure of. The conductor is kind of a weird person. The bad guy we don't know anything about other than he's a creep. Leia we're naturally sympathetic toward because she's a little girl. Uh, maybe a few less characters were needed in the hospital. I don't know if they're all going to play a part. You know, the Adam guy's on the train, her ex. Um, but overall, yeah, good stuff. J.E. Clark. And I'll continue reading. I'll send you some more comments. Thanks for submitting it. And I believe I'm going to end it right there. I'll be back again. Um, and I uh, hope you got something out of this. I'm ending the stream in three, two, one, right on.